So, hey, I'm Alex. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO here at Snorkel, also on faculty at the University of Washington in the CS department, and um, having the you know, have the privilege today of, of chatting with uh, with Simran. So, Simran, you want to give a quick intro uh, about yourself? Yeah. Hi. Thanks for having me. I'm Simran. Um, I'm a PhD student in the Hazy Research Group, advised by Professor Chris Ray, and my research focuses on building machine learning based systems for data management. That's awesome. Well, I, I uh, you know. Even in my tired state, I heard machine learning and I heard data. So that sounds like a, a great place to start, uh, especially in our in our data centric uh, side of the of the world. So uh, today, I guess um, you know, I mean, you you have a whole bunch of work uh, both out there in the literature and and you know in in the works. But I thought we would focus today on the, uh, uh, the AMA paper. Ask me anything: a simple strategy for prompting language models. Um, so maybe just to kick it off, mind telling us a little bit about the, you know, the well, the contribution, you know, the method that, that you've you, you developed here, but also, you know, some of the motivations, some of the, you know, bigger picture contextualization, and also some of the, the awesome results that you got. Yeah, for sure. So uh, AMA is a recent work. And so just to provide a little bit of background, uh, foundation models are amazing. We're super excited by their potential. Um, with these models, we, um, like both ML and non-ML experts, can express our goals to the model via natural language specifications of our task, which are commonly referred to as prompts. And the ability to prompt foundation models um, to perform a range of tasks with no additional training requirements allows us to really rapidly prototype new ideas and build apps in hours that might have previously taken years. Um, but writing these natural language prompts can be quite a brittle process because small modifications to the prompt, which can include like the types of demonstrations of our task, um, or even small things like formatting of the prompt can just cause very large variations in the types of predictions that the model will make um, when given that prompt. And so it's really painstaking to try to get prompts that are of a high quality. Um, and when you're going to even smaller foundation model variants, that brittleness only increases. Um, and so to mitigate this high degree of effort um, in prompting, we um, propose this method called Ask Me Anything, or AMA for short, which um, at a high level applies multiple decent, but ultimately noisy, not perfect prompts to each inference example and aggregates over their predictions using weak supervision to produce the final result. Um, and we study, or in the work we report both on sort of what makes for a decent effective prompt and also how to reliably aggregate over the multiple prompts. Um, just to highlight the headline results, um, AMA surpasses um, the few shot prompted 175 billion parameter GPT-3 model from OpenAI on 15 popular benchmark tasks with an open source 6 billion parameter model. Um, and you met you mentioned to talk a little bit about the implications of this. Um, so beyond just the comparison between the six billion and the one seventy five billion model, one other thing that we really want to highlight is we studied the benefits of AMA on fourteen open source language models um, and found um, significant boosts across the board. But um, Specifically on looking at the small versus large and open source versus closed source foundation models, this is really important because despite the promise of foundation models, they there is a major scalability challenge um, with like quality size trade-offs. And performance really tends to get bigger, uh, better um, where when you have like larger, bigger foundation models, but these are costly for most researchers and many organizations to host locally um, at the 175 billion scale. And models that are only accessible via APIs, like OpenAI's models are really costly and actually also hard if you have private data, like a private um, patient medical record where you can't just send this to the API. So, we're really excited about getting small open source foundation models to be better without sacrificing performance and AMA just contributes to this goal. That's that's well, that's an awesome framing and objective. And and um uh so so one one thing to, to, that I wanted to um to jump in on for a, a bit is the the um uh the kind of advent of of uh, prompt engineering and, and how how you view that. And so you know I'll, I'll draw a quick parallel back to some of the um you know, pre-prompting, pre-large pre language model, uh, weak supervision work that that we, you know, that you're you're deeply familiar with that we we worked on in the lab, and 
some of that came around, you know, this kind of transition from, um, you know, just around training data labeling, viewing it as this thing that, you know, you did ad hoc or someone else did to something that was actually an engineering task. And then to how do we partially automate or assist or accelerate or optimize that engineer, that training data engineering task. And obviously still, yeah, some of us, uh, uh, Chris would say he's bored of it by now, but you know, some of us are still, are still pushing on that, that direction. Now we have this whole other kind of maybe, maybe, you know, if you want to push back on this, it'll make it all the more interesting, but maybe this, you know, similar variant, um, around, okay, these prompts that unlock these zero shot capabilities of, of these, you know, these, these, um, you know, foundation models where first it's just kind of ad hoc, you know, just, you know, type it in to, to chat GPT and see what happens. And now we're actually hearing people talking about it as an engineering activity and, and one to your point, that's quite brittle and, and, and difficult to get to work. And would it be fair to kind of position your work of saying yes, in there, kind of in, in the vein of saying, yes, there is going to be prompt engineering and we can accelerate and partially automate it with, you know, principal techniques like the, the chaining, the, you know, weak supervision modeling, the the templatization that you contributed here, or do you view it a different way? I'm just a little bit of a leading question, but curious to hear your thoughts. Yeah, so I think with uh, the experience that I've had, I've looked at a range of applications um, where users have wanted to use prompting for different like data exploration tasks and data management tasks. Um, and there are a set of tools that are more principled and can um, consistently provide improvements. For example, there's a like great calibration um, style works by um, Bob Berkeley. And then I think with the weak supervision style approach, this is another one where like there are some underlying fundamental principles here. Um, with prompt engineering, um, the one thing that another trend that exists is that like with instruction fine tuning and sort of thing models are getting better at following instructions with like even less um, effort. But um, if, for example, even with chat, chat GPT, some people find it to be like very verbose or have other types of quirks that you don't necessarily like. So even as new models come out and potentially like um, models that are somewhat better um, come out, there are still kind of these needs to guide them and engineer them in specific ways. So I do see this need for like prompt engineering sort of continuing even as we have these different varieties of models come out and progress on foundation models. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But it, so in other words, it, 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 it likely is something that we're going to be, um, uh, be seeing more of, but it's probably not going to be someone, you know, crowdsourcing on Twitter the right way to phrase a prompt. And it's going to probably be a little bit more of, you know, building on top of principled approaches for tuning, optimizing, composing them, like like the AMA contribution, mm -hmm. um, which yeah. you, you showed has 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 an awesome. It's super exciting. If we had more time, I'd ask you a, a ton more questions about you know where this is headed. I think you clued in on some of the awesome work that, that I, I do happen to know you're doing. Data exploration, data management applications, privacy implications, like you pointed to. I'm sure we're going to see a ton more coming from from you and 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 the folks in the lab uh, upcoming uh, with these kind of you know prompt engineering, uh, data centric ideas applied to, 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 you know, to foundation models, super exciting area. Um, quick shameless plug uh, before I, I, I thank Simran and wrap up is that we have a, um, a free virtual foundation model summit on January 17th. I believe Simran's going to be giving a more in-depth talk there if you want to learn more about her work and um, uh, you can just check it out at, at snorkel.ai um, or, or search for it online. So hopefully we'll see many of you there and Simran, thank you so much for taking the time today. Thanks. And just wanted to close out with a quick shout out to the amazing week supervision work that you and others of, um, at Snorkel have done that we really um, built on in AMA. And then also my great collaborators, Ivanica, Mayi, Laurel, and, and others from KZ Research. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And 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 uh, I'm really excited to see everything that, that all of you uh, have coming out soon uh, and, and to see your talk at the summit. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.